How's it going everybody? My name is Absalom and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a very special one to me. It's something that I've poured a lot of time into and research so that as a community we have a very extensive database, if you will, for every single unsolved easter egg in all of zombies. This includes World at War all the way through Cold War, Exo Zombies, Infinite Warfare Zombies, World War II Zombies, Extinction, Dead Ops. If you can think of it, I promise you it's in this video because I've scoured the internet for new leads, information, findings, and then using what I've found as well as my own personal findings, I'm confident that this video is my best effort to present all of the hidden easter eggs in all of Call of Duty Zombies. So basically what I'm doing is I'm combining every possible easter egg, whether it's believed by some to be solved or just cut. I wanted to put every easter egg together so that hunters like myself don't have to watch millions of videos to figure out what's up to date, what's been solved, what hasn't been solved. It's just too confusing. And so to keep this video up to date, I'm going to be updating the description with any of these that have been solved. And if anything new is found in the future, then I will be putting that in the description as well. So if you're watching this video in a couple hundred years, then check the description and you'll have everything that you need. Also, I would greatly appreciate any kind of support on this video, and if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. Vanguard is around the corner and you don't want to miss out on any easter eggs. So with all that out of the way, let's get started by going through the secrets that have stumped the community for years on end. I do want to mention though, with over 30 easter eggs unsolved still, this video is going to be a lengthy one. I'm going to be doing my best to go through it as efficiently as possible, while also maintaining a quality breakdown for each easter egg. So please bear with me as we go through these, and of course timestamps and chapters are available for your convenience. Alright, there's no better place to start than at the beginning, so let's queue up World at War's unsolved easter eggs. Alright, our first easter egg is taking us all the way back to Verrucht. If you've been in the community for a while now, you've probably heard about the Verrucht Fountain. Now we've all longed to be able to venture out into the courtyard and get a close up of this blood filled piece of art. And when Blackout added in Black Ops 4, we finally got our chance to splash around. But did you know that before Blackout you could use Noclip on the PC to move around the map and then see what lies in the unknown? Well back in 2008, people found a hidden secret underneath the fountain. A mounted MG42 was placed underneath the map and then usable for anyone who broke out of the map. Well back then, people assumed it was just a cut asset or part of a campaign mission that was never used. However, when Chronicles was added in Black Ops 3, there was another surprise. The MG42 was still underneath the map, except Treyarch gave it a massive makeover. They actually added a whole platform with bones and skulls and then two zombie arms holding the gun. Now, why would they do this if it was just cut assets? Is it possible that this turret is actually activated by an easter egg and would maybe act as a trap of some sort? Or is this Treyarch's funny way of being clever for anyone smart enough to get underneath the map? If it is an easter egg, I would assume that it would involve players throwing things into the fountain in order to trigger something. If you have any ideas on how to solve Call of Duty's oldest easter egg, then let me know in the comments below or join my discord that's linked as well. But that is going to wrap up the Verruck Fountain and with one down, let's move on to our next World at War easter egg. Our next couple easter eggs take place on the giant and yes, I'm aware that this is not actually World at War. However, we all know this is Therese with makeup on and also I just wanted to keep the easter eggs in this video as linear as possible. So I'm going to be placing this map in the game that it belongs with. Alright, first up we have the dotted clock cipher easter egg. There's not much known on this easter egg except that this one clock in the library of the map has strange dots on its surface. This is very easily missed in game so no wonder it hasn't been solved yet. So if you look closely at the clock, it has dots next to each of the numbers. This has become known as the clock cipher and has had loads of work done, but never solved. I also want to point out that this clock can also be found in the boxing gym on Shadows of Evil. So this cipher is obviously important throughout Black Ops 3, and I would be really interested in knowing what lore is hidden behind the dotted cipher. It's probably not specific to the giant storyline, but more likely just tied to the broad scope of the Black Ops 3 storyline, but still interesting nonetheless. It seems like time itself isn't the only thing that's stopped on this map, but also the progress on this cipher. With absolutely no progress made in the last few years, it's starting to look a little bit dreary. I've even seen postings about how glass that is broken resembles the shape of a clock next to the second teleporter, and I just want to be the first to say that this has absolutely no relation to this cipher. It is just broken glass on the ceiling, and it has nothing to do with this. So if you're hunting this, then please don't consider that as a partial lead on a hunt. But that being said, however, if you have any actual leads on this easter egg, then the community would be greatly appreciative. But that is going to wrap up the dotted clock cipher on the giant. Now let's move on to our next unsolved easter egg, which is also a cipher. Now on to our last giant easter egg. Now for anyone out there who's hunted ciphers, let me be the first to say that it's going to be okay and that one day we will know what this one says. So our last unsolved easter egg on the giant is a cipher that is found in the window barrier beneath the giant clock, and it looks as follows. This cipher has stumped people ever since its discovery in Chronicles. It's believed by many to be a base 64 cipher, and I do agree, however, 
it's more likely double encrypted and if I had to guess I would say that it's using the giant as a key for the cipher but our biggest issue is that base64 ciphers are converted to ASC2 ciphers but we don't know what other cipher it's using as the giant as a key so if you're aware of a tucked away cipher in Black Ops 3 that no one's aware of then my door is always open. I hope that this cipher and the dotted clock cipher both get solved and that one day our community can finally get some sleep. But that is going to wrap up World at War maps with the Fountain Easter Egg on Baruch, the dotted clock cipher on the giant, as well as the giant cipher on the giant. So let's move on because we still have several more Easter eggs to go over. Moving chronologically, we arrive at Black Ops 1. All right, well, sadly, there's only one Easter egg left on this entire game. This lone Easter egg exists on Shangri-La. So apparently there is a mysterious place that a player can stand and then enter the Konami code to receive extra points. If you're unfamiliar with what the Konami code is, it's a cheat code made famous by the game Contra, who was developed by Konami in 1986. The sequence is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, and A. Ever since this cheat code has been used in gaming and it's now surfaced in Call of Duty when data miners found out that the Konami code could be entered in Shangri-La to receive bonus points. So ever since then, people have now spammed this all over the map with no prevail. So this unsolved easter egg needs a gaming legend to find the secret spot so we can all get to pack a punch a little bit quicker. I also want to point out that there is another easter egg on this map where you spam a cheat code and then blow up all the monkeys, and I just want to clear up any confusion that these are not related despite them being very similar. Now the only other thing I want to mention for Black Ops 1, and I'm not really sure if you want to call this an easter egg or not, but it is an unknown in the game, and that is the fact that there is the word Samantha, Amelia, Abigail written on the wall in the dressing room on Kino the Toten. And at this point in storyline, we know that Samantha is Samantha Max's, we know that Abigail is actually Misty from Black Ops 2, however, Amelia is still an unknown person in the storyline. It's widely believed that it's Samantha's mother, but we don't actually have confirmation on this. So if you know who this Amelia is, then please, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know who this is. But that is going to be everything for Black Ops 1, and that's going to wrap it up. So let's move on to Black Ops 2's unsolved Easter eggs. So looking at Black Ops 2, there's actually no Easter eggs left on this game that we know about. I did days upon days of research trying to find anything at all that could be an unsolved Easter egg, and sadly I just couldn't. There were two things, however, that people believed were unsolved, and so I did the research myself, and I can confidently say that these are not Easter eggs. The first being the Transit Energy Orb. This is something you get when you complete the Transit Easter Egg, and then you load into a game with Misty. You'll be able to see these Energy Orbs flying around the map, and this is just something kind of cool to show you where the energy is that powers the pylon, and it's nothing more. The second one was a little bit far-fetched, where it involved shooting a plane on fire in Origins with the upgraded Ice Staff, and apparently would extinguish the fire and be a possible lead on an easter egg, but I can confidently say the only thing extinguished here is any easter eggs left on Black Ops 2. So with that out of the way, let's move on to a game that actually has easter eggs left to solve, and that is Black Ops 3. Despite what people might think, the code did not actually shine a light on every unsolved easter egg, so I'm here to tell you that there is actually things left on this game, and let's get started with the very first one. Alright, so it's time to get shady with the easter eggs by starting with Shadows of Evil. Shadows has a couple of things left to discover. Our first unsolved easter egg is something that you might have forgotten about, but this is the noir mode that can be activated by shooting a picture off the wall in the boxing gym. This mode is pretty cool, but apparently in the game files we are aware of a way of exiting the noir mode. However, no one except Blundell himself seems to know how to do this. Could it be by shooting something else, or is there a symbol or something visible in this mode that allows us to leave? Who knows, but hopefully one day someone will find a way to turn off the depression in Shadows of Evil. Okay, our next unsolved mystery, or should I say mysteries, are the Revelation Ciphers. There are a total of 14 ciphers on Revelations, and sadly only 4 of them have been solved. So instead of breaking all 10 ciphers down, I'm just going to display each one here, and if you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord and talk to me personally about the unsolved ciphers. What I will talk about with these is that they are mostly, if not all, double encrypted, and they're using very complicated encryptions. Some of them are set up to appear as though they are using hashing, but most likely don't, and that would be crazy if they did. But this is the product of Jason Blundell's mind, and he even went on record saying that we wouldn't find most of these. So with that being said, I want to wish you the best of luck on hunting these ciphers. I personally really enjoy hunting ciphers, and ever since solving the Voyage of Despair doll cipher, I've been eager to hunt some more, so if you want to nerd out over some ciphers, I'm always down to try to potentially crack one of these codes. Now with that one out of the way, let's move on to three more unsolved easter eggs on Revelations. The first one has us digging through the code once again, where it is found that a chicken can be used in place of a trip mine as your weapon. The code also mentions that eggs can be seen from a teleporter, but it's unclear how exactly this would work. So what we know so far is that somehow on Revelations, you can acquire a chicken to help you kill zombies. 
Would it be similar to the Dead Ops arcade chicken, or is this something entirely different? We also know that chicken sound effects are in the code, which could be tied to this easter egg. Currently with no progress towards this easter egg, the community isn't even sure if this is still active or scrapped. Our best lead is the chicken coop in spawn, but other than that, this easter egg is an unsolved mystery in Black Ops 3 and has absolutely zero leads. The next unsolved easter egg in Revelations is the theater screen in Kano's portion of the map. It is believed that the screen can actually be lowered and used like it was in the original Kino. However, the trees are currently blocking the projector, and this is where it starts to get a little bit weird, because these trees that block it aren't actually like the other trees in the game. These trees actually move around and can be shot right through. So could doing something to clear these trees out of the way be the easter egg to allow us to lower the screen? Who knows, but I don't think the trick would just program two trees to be different for absolutely no reason. Let me know what you think in the comments below, because it would be really cool to finally use the projector screen once again. Alright, so our last easter egg on Revelations is actually dubbed the Meteor easter egg and it's a much lesser known easter egg. So in the files of the game, it states that if you take an Apothecan egg, which is towards the end of the main easter egg, it will allow you to place it into a mysterious pot and something will happen. Look, I know it's vague, but that is all that we have to go on. In the code, it has a sequence of words that are grouped together that allow us to believe what this is actually about, and that's why it's called the Meteor easter egg, because it has words like Gateworm egg, Holding pot, trigger meteor, it's all together in a sequence of coding that I won't show in the video, but without getting too technical, you basically are supposed to put an apothecan egg in some sort of pot, and this will trigger some sort of gateworm meteor. It seems kind of crazy, but honestly, this is Black Ops 3, and the easter eggs are pretty wild, so I have no idea what this easter egg might actually look like, but I think it's time to start looking for places to put these eggs other than the apothecan stomach. But that is going to wrap up Revelation's unsolved easter eggs, and let's move on to our next game, Black Ops 4. So Black Ops 4 is notorious for having a lot of side easter eggs and however a lot of them have been solved but there's still so many that haven't been solved. Even just a few months ago there was new ones being discovered so with this game there is a lot to go over so I'm going to be trying to move as efficiently as possible. Our first easter egg is the floating zombies easter egg on Voyage of Despair. It's actually debated on whether it's solved or not and I know it's funny that we don't know but Personally, I believe that it's already solved, but there are plenty of people that still think there is something left to find, and so in that case, I'm going to be including it in this video. There is a zombie strung up on the wall in the galley in the Voyage of Despair map. So once you collected all three parts that needed to assemble the zombie, you will actually get a strange effect on certain rounds. The zombies will appear as though they are floating and more likely underwater. So to get this one started, you need to collect three pieces. The first is a trident that you use an acid bomb to knock down from the rafters in the engine room. The second one is going to be a mustache that you need another acid bomb to knock out of a plant from the promenade starboard deck. And the third one is going to be a crown that you can shoot down from the deck in the bridge area of the map that is sitting on top of one of the steam stacks. Once you have all three parts, the zombie can now be assembled and this is as far as people have gotten. Personally, I think the floating zombies are the reward, but there is another side of people who believe that now you need to do something during this round to get the full reward. Knowing Black Ops 4, I would not be surprised at all if there is actually more to this, so I hope that if something does exist, that one day we get a definitive answer to this easter egg. Alright, the next easter egg is on Blood of the Dead. It's probably not news to you that there are two unsolved easter eggs on Blood of the Dead, with the first one being the bone in the cell blocks. Now I'll keep this one pretty short because there's not much known on this easter egg at all. This bone has Sal DeLuca's inmate number scratched into it, which is 386A, and it can be found in the cell block area. Now, no one has any leads on what this bone is here for, and it can't just be a prop because it doesn't show up in custom mutations. So what is this clue to an easter egg that Treyarch wants us to know? No one has any answers to the questions we've been asking for years now, and we're no closer to solving this than as we were on day one. But hey, maybe you have some crazy idea that will solve this mystery on Blood of the Dead. Our next egg is a very popular one, it is the Pert Point Easter Egg on Blood of the Dead. Now I'm going to say that this easter egg is almost undoubtedly cut from the game, however, this video is covering every single unsolved easter egg in all of zombies, so I'd be remiss if I didn't include this one in this video. Now this egg involves a mysterious coin that is lodged in the change return slot on the brew perk. Why is this coin there? It's believed that it's part of a free perk easter egg, but who can honestly say for sure? I've tested loads of ideas with this with no luck at all, but my best guess is that it involves the mini teleporter in spawn. Now you get a voice line whenever you break the teleporter about how you can maybe fix it. So could fixing the teleporter be the way that the free perk icon spawns the map and then the coin maybe disappears as payment? Who knows, but this community could always use an extra hand to help solve this easter egg. Speaking of extra hands, that brings me to my next easter egg, the catwalk arms. The catwalk has zombie arms that swipe at you when you cross the catwalk. but if you damage the arms, they retract for the rest of the round. 
So this easter egg is said to have a reward if the arms are shot in a correct order. For whatever reason, this one kind of reminds me of the steel barriers on transit, this cramped space where you're trying to shoot zombie arms. But anyways, the reward could be the hands disappear for the rest of the game or possibly they drop something for us when they're done correctly. Now this could be a really cool way to get a power up or something for free, but that's going to wrap up Blood of the Dead and now let's move on to our next map which is 9. So looking at 9 or IX, we've got two unsolved easter eggs remaining on this map. Our first one is the long standing fireballs in the arena. There are 8 bowls around the outside of the arena and during specialist rounds the 4 on the sides will light up with fire. However, it was found out that by using a Wraith Fire Grenade, you can light up all 8 bowls in a specific order to get them to stay permanently lit for the rest of the game. Now, as for what this next step is, no one knows. But why do these bowls light up? What are they part of? Well, hopefully we'll get answers soon. It was believed that they were part of the Guitar Rift Easter Egg, but with that recently being solved, that theory went out the window. So whatever this Easter Egg is, I hope the reward is pretty lit because we've spent hours upon hours chucking grenades into other bowls with no real progress. Also, if you're curious about hunting this yourself, the order to light these in is the left Ra, the left Zeus, the right Odin, the right Danu, the left Danu, the left Odin, the right Ra, and then the right Zeus. And that's going to wrap up the nine fireballs. Reminder, it has to be a Wraith Fire Grenade. And now let's move on to our next Easter egg on this map. All right, moving on, we reached the mural in the Pack-A-Punch room on nine. Now, my friend Skite actually brought this to my attention a while back, and it's strange because this mural was found on the wall of the Pack-A-Punch room, but it's only visible in regular games, which means it doesn't show up in custom mutations, which is a good way to confirm if it's an Easter egg or not. Now, my best guess is that this mural is actually a way to show the steps for the main Easter egg, and that's why it's actually there, because in customs, you don't have the ability to do the main Easter egg, so it's been removed. But if this isn't the case, then what is this mural for? Perhaps you need to shoot it with a specific gun or specialist to trigger something. Honestly, I really don't know what this could either be if it's not due to the main Easter egg, but I'm really curious what you think, so let me know in the comments below. Now let's move on to the map that has my current focus for Easter egg hunting, which is Dead of the Night. Now this map has two Easter eggs that have haunted me endlessly. <laughs> Sorry, that was a lame attempt at a, at a ghost joke because, you know, the map has ghosts. Anyways, let's just move on to the unsolved easter eggs already, um, with the first one being the trap easter egg that I mentioned in a previous video of mine. Now this is something that my team back in the day always found suspicious. So no matter what trap you're doing this with, it always turns blue when you're doing the main easter egg. So why did Treyarch program the flames to be green if it's not used at all? So then that got us thinking, what do the green flames actually do? They don't stick to the shields, so what then? Well, could they have to kill a certain amount of poison catalyst in the traps? We have no idea. A recent theory of mine is that maybe you have to use the wooden steak knife in some fashion to melee something in it, so I'm gonna be testing that later this week. And if you're sitting there thinking that this doesn't really look like much, well, the devs don't have a lot of time on their hands and they're not just making green flames for shits and giggles. So now we have to figure out what the green flames are actually for. What do they represent? And that's a little inside look at what I'm currently hunting as well as another Easter egg on this map, which we will get to in just a moment. And if you want to find out what's been tested on this green flame easter egg then let me know in the comments or join my discord because i have a full list of everything that we've tested in my discord that i will happily share with you but now let's move on to the easter egg that i've been hunting well over a year and spent countless hours on the dead of the night vases all right so the dead of the night vases so there are six vases that appear around the walls of the main hall and can be broken with frag grenades or a pack a punch trebuchet now after an update in the game, the vases were actually able to be broken and it's now believed to be a jump scare or have some sort of reward. Personally, I've been working with my good friend Fald for a long time and we are under the impression that this is a combination based easter egg with 720 combinations. Now it's taken quite a while to run through all the possible combinations, but we're a little over halfway at the time of this video. So there is another element to this easter egg that I will share with you here. So we actually believe that this could very well be tied to a character specific loadout and possibly require the player to use shock rooms. We also believe that the bookshelves that are on the upper balconies could be linked to this as well as a Celtic calendar, which, oh, what do you know, is on the bookshelves. So now we know that the bookshelves are obviously open by interacting with the books in order, but it could actually have more going on to it than just a secret door opening with a reward. Now this Easter egg was believed to be a jump scare originally, so what better way to scare you than have something pop out of the bookcase? For all the lore that supports our reasoning for why the Celtic calendar and the loadout and the bookshelves are involved, join my Discord that's linked below. There is just so much to talk about and we don't have time in this video, but I promise you I would love to work with you in my Discord. So the vases have 720 combinations to try, which is a little bit absurd, so maybe our bookshelves are the key to let us know how to break the vases. 
We just believe it's a little bit crazy Treyarch would expect us to try 720 combinations if there's no absolute tell for this Easter egg. That being said, I'm still running through all 720 brute force styles, so if you guys have any extra ideas, make sure you share them in the comments, because I think at this point, after throwing so many grenades, I'm a little bit delirious on this Easter egg. That is gonna wrap up the Dead of the Night vases. I really want this one solved, so let's all work together to get this one figured out. Okay, so that's gonna conclude Black Ops 4. However, before we move on, I just wanna mention that Ancient Evil has zero, zip, no, nada, nothing for Easter eggs outside of the main Easter egg. So that's just really sus to me, and I'm just not sure why Treyarch made DLC 3 have absolutely nothing. If this map does have side easter eggs, I would suggest starting with the upgraded shield because it's one of the few maps without one. However, this map is just a mystery to me on why it has absolutely zero side easter eggs. My point in putting in this video is just to maybe look into this map because it has a lot of potential to have side easter eggs. Alright, now we've finally arrived at Cold War Zombies, the current zombies experience. This being said, easter eggs aren't really the same as they were. Now, don't worry, this is not going to turn into some rant about Cold War, but I just want to say that there's only one kind of lead for all of Cold War. This is the first time that a game has been solved this quickly, and so there's just not much to talk about when it comes to unsolved Easter eggs. Now, I've researched thoroughly, and there's only one thing I actually want to mention that is on the machine. Now, most of us know that on round 42, if you enter the Dark Aether, a hulking summoner will stomp by on the map. But did you know that he will also enter the map if you go into Dark Aether and stay underground for 115 seconds? Loud stomping and moaning can be heard, and then a max ammo will spawn in the pond. And this is where the debate starts on whether it's a solved case closed easter egg or if there's more to it. Now my own opinion and own personal experience is that I went into the dark ether all the way up until like round 40, going into every single portal on every single step of the easter egg. I did it so many times in one game, did it over a couple different games actually. I never got the max ammo to spawn, I never got the loud stomping, I never got the loud moaning. I couldn't get this to work no matter how hard I tried. So. Hey, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but hey, assuming this is an Easter egg, well, Cold War is not really known for its convoluted steps, so my opinion on this is that it's probably just a max ammo Easter egg if this actually does exist. Now, for those that believe this is an Easter egg, they think that the max ammo is a hint at what's next and that maybe you need to shoot something to trigger the next step. I've seen the argument that why would the reward be a max ammo, that's kind of stupid, so there must be more to this, but honestly, this is the same map that has two free perk easter eggs in a game that you can buy your way to a perkaholic in five minutes, so I think the reward is just a max ammo. That being said, I also couldn't get this to work, so I don't know where I stand on this one, but I just wanted to put it in this video because it is something that is unsolved apparently, and I am not leaving anything out in this video. And with all of that, that's going to conclude Treyarch Zombies easter eggs with a total of 19 unsolved unique easter eggs but realistically it's 28 if you count each individual cipher on Revelations. So now let's move into non treyarch zombies. First off, let's start by addressing the black sheep of the lot, Exo Zombies and Extinction. Both of these modes have nothing to offer as for unsolved easter eggs, and I'm sure most of you are happy to hear that these games are completed and will never have to be re-downloaded ever again. I was a bit surprised to learn that nothing was left, but Personally, I'll happily ghost Extinction, and at the end of the day, I guess our community was just too advanced for Exo Zombies. Okay, so with those two games out of the picture, that brings us to a much, much more appreciated Zombies, a community favorite, World War II, wait, sorry, that's the, that's the next one. No, of course, I'm referring to Infinite Warfare Zombies. Infinite has two unsolved Easter eggs as of today, so let's dive into Zombies in Spaceland and go over our first unsolved mystery. So our first unsolved easter egg is on Spaceland and it's something that has stumped the community ever since the beginning. This is the Space Helmet easter egg and it's only known about in the code of the game. Now we notice that on round 6000, it's coded to give all zombies space helmets which would make headshots much harder and the zombies power level over 9000. But why round 6000? Well it's believed that it's actually triggered by an easter egg and that the devs put it at round 6000 so that technically it's in the game but on a round that no one could reach as to not spoil the game's surprise. The problem here is that no one knows what triggers the actual helmets, so if you're feeling saucy then maybe you can load into a game and solve this one for the community. The leading theory on this is that the astronaut behind the glass in the journey to space section of the map with the two blue balloons could be a hint on how to solve this easter egg. Maybe you have to shoot all the balloons except for the blue ones to trigger something. Your guess is as good as mine, so let's just move on to the next unsolved easter egg in Infinite Warfare Zombies. Now on to our next one in Rave in the Redwoods. Now this is the slasher mask easter egg that is shown in the trailer. The community is really torn on whether it's just added into the trailer for special effects, or if that was a teaser to show us an actual easter egg in game that we could be rewarded with the slasher mask. 
Seeing that the Slasher Mask is in the game is promising, but whether it's obtainable is a whole other question. Masks are not a new addition to zombies, so it's very possible, but I'm leaning more to the side that it's just a cinematic effect for the trailer. But no matter what you believe, this is still an unsolved mystery on Infinite Warfare, however it has absolutely no leads on how to maybe get this. And with that, that's going to conclude Infinite Warfare Zombies. So that leaves us with the beloved World War II Zombies. I'm actually shocked this has anything left since the community couldn't stop praising this game for all its dragons and apothecans and shadow guys and... Wait, sorry, wrong game. Actually, um, no, World War II is one of the toughest zombies not only for surviving, but for hunting. The devs left no handouts in this game and even went on record saying that these easter eggs are some of the hardest ones ever, but they are kinda possible if we look hard enough. We're like, yes, yeah. <laughs> The hint system exists solely for the casual path to get, you know, the players who want to get in and explore and see what the game's all about. But there is this deeper, darker level. It is wicked hard. Thanks, guys. For real though, this is one of my favorite zombies, if I'm being honest, and it absolutely kills me that there's not much solved in this game because most likely there is far more to discover than what I'm going to cover today. I'm only going to be going over the known unsolved Easter eggs, but I bet there are loads of eggs yet to be discovered. The community kinda boycotted this game, leaving lots of work to be done, so let's dive into the insanity that is left to be sorted out on World War II Zombies. Our first few easter eggs take place on the final right. So let's start with the most popular easter egg, and this is known as the Clock Tower easter egg. Very little is actually known about this one other than that there's four Tesla coils placed at the top of the Clock Tower. We also know that it is possible for the Zeppelin to strike one of these Tesla coils. Originally, it was believed that the Zeppelin had to be shot in six different places in order to make it strike the tower. However, my friend Glitching Queen made a video on this and it actually just proves why this isn't actually possible and it gives really good insight on the clock tower, so I highly recommend that video, which I'll link below in the description. So after her discovery, we know that the Zeppelin can in fact strike the tower, but it's only random and that the player doesn't actually need to do anything. So the Easter egg that remains is how do we get the other three Tesla coils charged and what happens when we do? These are the questions that have stuck with the community ever since the start. This is the base map for World War II, the map where the devs had the most time to work on it, and there's only one side easter egg solved on this map. What? Only one? Yes, only one easter egg. The creative team has even stated in interviews that after saving Klaus, i.e. the hardcore easter egg, there is still lots to uncover in this map, so clearly there is more side easter eggs to find. The clock tower being the tallest building is almost guaranteed to have something, but what exactly is what remains to be unsolved? The last information I have on this tower is that it has a chicken weather vane on the top that is identical to the one used for the main easter egg and the one in spawn. It also has a Nazi eagle crest at the top as well, just like the one in spawn. So now it's up to us to find out how to shock the last three Tesla coils and get this easter egg solved. Okay, let's get more grounded and move on to our next unsolved easter egg. This is the fountain easter egg, and no, I'm not talking about the Varak fountain again. I'm actually referring to this bizarre fountain placed on the wall in the town square on Final Reich. It's odd because it's the only one of its kind, and it's really out of place and it's had people questioning it for quite some time. It's possible the fountain could be filled with blood after enough sacrifices are made or something when drained might offer a reward. This could be Sledgehammer's version of the bloodbath on Mob of the Dead or Blood of the Dead where players filled up a tub with the blood until it drained giving them the spoon upgrade. After testing, I was able to see that the jack-in-the-boxes and the lethal grenades do in fact sit in the fountain. There's also a drain at the bottom of the fountain and a weird spout in the lion's mouth. I tried to figure out what this might actually drain into, but it's kind of tough to tell since you aren't able to get directly underneath the fountain. This has my easter egg spidey senses tingling, but I've yet to find much to go on. The fountain could be a start of an egg or possibly the place that the reward is picked up at the end of an easter egg. It's difficult to know for sure, but the hunt is on for this unsolved mystery. Moving on, let's talk about another popular unsolved easter egg on the final right, the metal panel in the town square. Now this panel is identical to the metal panels found around the map that are used in the main easter egg. The panels are blown open in various ways to reveal a battery. So why is this metal panel on the side of a house in a place where the players can't reach? Well, it's my belief that since you have to use a bomber zombie and a whistling zombie to break the other two panels open, then it's likely that you need a different kind of zombie for this one. So hmm, I wonder what enemy is tall enough to do the job. Oh yeah, the boss zombie aka the panzer mortar that just so happens to be the exact same height and let loose in the same area of the map. Coincidence? I think not good sir or madam. I think not. 
This panel is begging to be opened and I am happy to be talking about it in today's video. As for what's in the panel, my best guess at this moment is that it's another battery that perhaps could actually one hit kill the Panzer Mortar. Since you need three batteries in total to kill this beast, it would be a really cool Easter egg reward if you have a super battery of sorts that one hits this boss for those skilled enough to have him whack the panel open. I also want to mention that some believe you need to use a trap to reach the panel, but personally I think that the trap's launching ability is solely for the blue enigma device, but hey, maybe they're right. Maybe you need to launch yourself up and ride the pans around like a horse. And with that, that's going to wrap up the panel easter egg, and now let's talk about the next easter egg, the secret door easter egg on final right. Now the door easter egg is a much lesser known easter egg. This originated after people reported a door in the town square could be opened by shooting it, However, it required you having to complete the hardcore easter egg in game before you could actually shoot it. Well, after testing, it seems like the first mystery is what actually triggers the door to be shot. It's currently allowing some players to shoot it and then some not to. So whatever triggers this is probably being done by accident while people do the hardcore easter egg. So first, we need to sort out what lets people break the door, and then second, we need to sort out why the door breaks. Remember what I said about how the dev said there is a lot more to be found after saving Klaus. Well, could it be possible that this door is actually a secret path for Klaus to walk to? Back when the game first dropped, Klaus used to glitch out and walk into a wall, but perhaps maybe he didn't actually glitch out and then he was actually going to a different place. So is it possible to maybe escort Klaus a different way depending on how you prepare the town square? I don't know, but for now let's just find out what makes the door open to start with. I also want to add that the door directly to the left of it can actually be broken by a jump scare zombie, and at the moment I can't say the same for the right door, so I'm going to still be hunting this, but it is a possibility that this is just a jump scare door. Okay, so here is the last unsolved easter egg on the final right, the I-Beam easter egg. Now back when this map first dropped, everyone thought that this was actually the number one, and people were really confused why the number one was all over these weird spots all over the map. Well, then they realized that it was an I-Beam and not the number one. Well, this makes a lot more sense why they're all over the map. It's just decorative features to make the map appear more real. But wait, there's an I-Beam easter egg in the darkest shore, so is there an I-Beam easter egg in the Final Reich? It's very possible that an I-Beam could be used in an easter egg in the Final Reich as well. And this actually leads me straight into our next unsolved easter egg, the I-Beam easter egg on darkest shore. Wait, that's the one you were just talking about. Well, it's believed that this easter egg isn't actually solved yet, so let me back up a little bit. What is the I-Beam easter egg? Well, if you make your way into the U-boat pen on the darkest shore, you'll see these two I-beams in a window barrier. Now, if you shoot the left I-beam eight times, it will eventually turn and spell out the word high and then give you 250 jolts or points. Now, personally, this is where I believe that the Easter egg comes to a halt and it is actually solved and that it's just a funny message from the devs saying hi. But there are a lot of people that believe that now that you get the 250 jolts, that you need to take those jolts and then drop it somewhere on the map like you did for the PPSH Easter egg on the final right. Now I could very well see this being the case, but in my gut I just think it's a funny message from one of the devs. So now that we've covered this potential unsolved easter egg, maybe now you have some ideas for the I-Beam easter egg on the Final Reich, if one does exist. But that is going to wrap up our unsolved easter eggs on the Final Reich, and now let's move on to our next map. I promise we're almost done, I've only got two more easter eggs so just please hang in there, but the next one is the darkest shore and is going to be the number or color cipher. Now this is a really weird and strange one that kind of feels a lot like the Yeti Ice Cipher that's on Infinite Warfare on Zombies in Spaceland. So this one takes place in the secret room in the minecart tunnels. So on the floor there are three coffins and on two of the coffins there are these colored squares with letters that border the entire coffin. Now the fact that there's only two and not on all three is really odd because if it was a duplicate asset then it would be on all three coffins. So where it gets weirder is that we actually have the same colors on the breakable panels around the map. So would shooting these with the ripsaw do something? Also, side note, I know these panels are used in the main easter egg, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud here for a potential side easter egg. So if the ripsaw is used in this, keep in mind that we also have an upgraded easter egg allowing us to buy ammo for the ripsaw. Could that have a deeper meaning than just surviving? Perhaps being able to buy infinite ammo for the ripsaw is to shoot the hundreds of tiles needed to progress this cipher. Now, I'm aware how far-fetched this is, but hey, welcome to World War II easter eggs. They're hard as fuck and they don't care about your feelings. The devs said they were the hardest ones yet, and they meant it. So Farfetch'd is right at home with World War II Easter eggs. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, Chronicles 2. Wait, nope, that's a future video, or at least we hope. Well, no, of course, I'm talking about the final unsolved Easter egg. Now this is the possible panel Easter egg on the Darkest Shore. So there's two sets of panels, and they are found at the top of the map on the Darkest Shore. So when translated, they read surface, opposite, and within. Now I hate to be a negative fancy here, but personally I don't think this is an easter egg. 
then why'd you put it in your video? Well, I want to be as thorough as possible. And there are several people who have been hunting these panels or batteries, if you will. And they believe that you need to switch the levers on these in some fashion and it'll trigger something. As for my take on this, I really, really doubt this as an Easter egg. There's a few simple reasons and here's my first one. These panels are also found on the final right. Now, here's the second one. These panels aren't exactly reachable to a player and here's my third reason. The final step of the Easter egg takes place right in front of these batteries. So why would they make a side Easter egg overlap the finale of the main Easter egg? But hey, there's both sides of the coin. I'll let you decide if this is an Easter egg or not. And with that, we've now got every single unsolved Easter egg in all of Zombies collectively in one place. But wait, there's more. I actually have an honorable mention Easter egg because this always bothered me back in the day and I kind of remember the community looking into this. But these three panels here, you might be able to stack a Jack in the Box. It is possible to get one to stick on there. So I don't know, look into it. It's something to think about if you're bored looking for something to hunt. This brings us to a grand total of 29 unique Easter eggs and then 38 total if you count each cipher on Revelations. This is pulling from World at War, BO1, BO2, BO3, BO4, Cold War, Exo Zombies, Infinite Warfare Zombies, Extinction, Dead Ops, and World War II. I promised you I researched every single game. My goal was to round up every single unsolved Easter egg and just put them all in one place with an up-to-date reference point for anyone out there who's interested in hunting these. However, since I wasn't cordially invited to the dinner party where Jason Blundell, Lee Ross, and Cameron Dayton created the vast amount of Easter eggs, there's no possible way to know every single unsolved Easter egg, but I have put all the known unsolved Easter eggs in this video. That being said, if you're aware of an unsolved Easter egg and you're for some reason keeping it from the community and now you feel like sharing, then please, please, please message me, comment below, email me, join the Discord, send a carrier pigeon, I don't care, do something to contact me and I will gladly look into it and feature it in a future video if it ends up being something. I also want to mention that since there is a lot of content to cover in this video, I had to cut a lot of it short. So if you're interested in hunting and want the full scope of information on any of these Easter eggs, the best way to go about this is to join my Discord link in the description and I'll be able to share all the findings for these to get you up to speed on each hunt. Now if you couldn't tell, I've put a lot of time researching every game's unsolved mysteries in order to make this video. I do it because I want to see these solved and when it comes to the unsolved easter eggs there's a lot of confusion as what's left. And I hope that this video cleared that up for you. But I would greatly appreciate if you could just lightly tap that like button and then maybe consider obliterating the subscribe button. It would help my channel out a lot and it'll get you ready to be in the know for Vanguard Zombies and anything Easter eggs. I want to thank my good buddy Fald for helping research and test several things in game with me. So be sure to check out his socials as well, link below. He's responsible for solving the Project Scatty Easter egg on Classified and he's been part of my Easter egg hunting team for a while now. Thank you so much for all your hard work in helping make this video possible. I also want to make a blanket statement and just say thank you to the community for hunting all these easter eggs and sharing your findings over the last decade. It's nearly impossible at this point to know who solved what or discovered what, so I'm just going to say thank you to everyone and let's get out there and hunt all these easter eggs that are left. Alright, that is going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys found it useful and thank you so much for watching. My name is Absalom and I hope to see you in my next video.